Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Amanda Constable. I'm the Director of Financial Assistance here at Villanova. I am joined by a slew of my colleagues this evening because I know that there are going to be lots of questions considering everything that is going on with the FAFSA this year. Um, I will be presenting with our Assistant Director, Alicia DiNardo. Um, in the background, I will have my Assistant Director, Morgan Dawson, um, Senior Associate Director, Mary Kay Clara, and Associate Director, Nathan Walsh. So they'll be taking your questions if you throw them into the Q&A and chat. And we also have Senior Assistant Director of Admission, Daly Simpson here. She will be here to help with any questions that you might have around scholarships or anything like that. Um, everything that I will be presenting on tonight will be around need-based financial assistance, um, what that looks like, what they all mean, and um, what you'll what you want to do throughout your next four years. So we'll go ahead and kick it off. So just a few important notes. You want to just make sure that you are checking your applicant status page throughout. You want to see if there's any additional documentation that is being requested from our office to finalize that financial aid notice. I'm going to address the elephant in the room is the FAFSA. We did begin receiving FAFSAs this week. Um, we had to wait for our financial aid system to be up and running in order to load those. And as you've all heard in the news, there are still some um, flubs that are going on as far as calculations and all of that. So the estimated aid packages that you have received have come from the College Board CSS profile and the information and the tax returns that you submitted for that. We were able to give those estimated packages um, using that information and also an estimated student aid index, and we'll talk about what that is. Um, so that is what you see right now. You'll just see estimated funds. We are slowly receiving those FAFSAs, and um, once they are in and we can verify that the information we've received is accurate, we will start getting out final financial aid notices showing an accurate breakdown of all of those. Um, but if there are other forms outside of the FAFSA that you need to complete, you'll see that on the applicant status page. Those might be extra forms that we've um, recognized that we need upon review. Or if you've only submitted just the FAFSA or just the CSS profile, make sure that you are submitting copies of the 2022 tax returns, um, W-2s and all tax schedules to our office as well. We can't put together an um, estimated or tentative aid package until we have those. So we'll talk about first about how need-based aid is packaged. So you've probably completed the CSS profile and you've probably completed the FAFSA. The FAFSA um, now presents after the application is complete what's called a student aid index. This is the old EFC that you may have heard if you've had, um, if you've had children that have attended college before. Um, it's now the student aid index. It's calculated a bit differently, but it has the same theory behind it. Um, and then the CSS profile, which we still call that the expected family contribution or the EFC. So when we are reviewing this information, we're reconciling any differences, any um, inaccuracies that we might have seen on the application, looking at those tax returns and those W-2s that we're looking at. Um, and so upon that, we're using that to determine any of the eligibility. The FAFSA is what provides the um, State, the state eligibility and also the federal eligibility for aid, while the EFC from the CSS profile is what we use to determine your Villanova grant eligibility, or in some cases, you'll hear me call it institutional grant throughout the presentation. So you're going to take the cost of attendance. We'll talk about that on the next slide and what that is. And you take away the expected family contribution and or the student aid index in order to determine what the family's financial need is. So your cost of attendance is going to be any of the education related expenses that um, we identify to, to show the maximum amount of financial assistance that a student can receive. Um, any funding that they, you know, that you are receiving towards that is what we're using to build the cost of attendance. So it's made up of tuition, fees, housing, and food. We call those direct expenses. And this year, you'll also see a books charge. Um, I don't know if there's been a lot of information that has been provided or what that looks like, but books will automatically be billed to the students. There will be an opt-out option as well if you'd like to buy them elsewhere. 
Um, but those will be direct expenses that you'll see on the bill. And then indirect expenses, those are things that aren't billed directly by us. So the course materials, the transportation that you have um, going back and forth, um, miscellaneous personal expenses, so your toothbrush or toothpaste and things like that, and also any loan fees. So those are things that you'll see built in if you have received one of your our estimated aid packages. You'll see that breakdown of the cost of attendance by direct expenses and indirect expenses and helping you come up with what that bottom line is going to be. Um, I'm going to touch quickly. So this is where you would see estimated grant right now on your financial aid notice. This could be a combination of the federal Pell Grant, the federal SCOG grant, the uh, any of uh, any PA state grant or out of state grant that you may be eligible for, as well as the um, Villanova University grant. Hi, friends. Um, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Alicia. As Amanda said earlier. Uh, super excited to be with you tonight to go over all of these things that you're seeing and your brains are filling and flooding and panicking probably, but it's okay because we're here to walk you through them. Um, so as Amanda said, these items on the slide are anything that could have been included in the financial aid notice that you um, may have received from us. So First, if there was estimated grants listed, it could have been a combination of any of these items, the Pell Grant, the federal SEOG. Those two things are determined by the FAFSA application and anything that we get from that FAFSA application. Those are need-based federal aid options. We could also get state grant information from if you're a resident of the state of Pennsylvania, for example, there's a Pennsylvania state grant that you may be eligible for. Um, my best advice for these state grants is to make sure that you are on top of any applications or anything else that needs to be done for those state grants. So check out your state's um, higher education agency and make sure that you're following everything that they need you to do. Finally, you could be given the our Villanova grant, which is Villanova's need-based grant, which I'll go over in a little bit more detail in the next slide. And eligibility for that grant is based on the need that was assessed when you create when you completed the CSS profile. <clears throat> so as I said, the Villanova grant that um, you might you may be eligible for is a need-based grant, not a scholarship. Um, since this is need-based, this means that you will have to reapply for financial aid each year uh, in order to in order for us to be able to determine if you're eligible for this. And since it's need-based, if there's some change in your family's financial circumstance your financial aid may need to be adjusted. Uh, while our goal is to provide you with the same level of resources year to year, a change in circumstances can ultimately change your eligibility. Some examples of things that could change your eligibility are changes to the number of children in college from year to year. If you have multiple siblings in school this year, next year one of them graduates, that could fluctuate the calculation. Um, if some, if one of your siblings moves out within the next year, that could alter the uh, calculation. Um, increases or decreases in income or assets or investments or any of those super businessy numbers things that you put into the CSS profile, any of those that change can have an impact on that bottom line calculation. So um, always keep an eye out for that kind of changing information. And if you're not sure how things might change, you can always give us a call, let us know, and we can go over that with you. Um, another big thing that could change your aid from year to year is a change in housing status. From, for example, if you were living on campus one year, and then you decided to live at home with mom and dad the next year, that would change your costs. So that would change your financial aid eligibility. 
In addition to all of those, you'll also need to maintain at least a 2.0 GPA each year to keep the Villanova grant. And you can find all of these Villanova grant details on our financial assistance website. So we'll move on to the self-help section um, that you may have seen listed on your aid notice. And we're gonna start with the estimated work option that's out there for you. This option could be federal work study, which is a need-based um, aid program given to students in order to allow them to obtain a job on campus and earn funds through hours worked. Students would earn a paycheck for their hours and um, it would that paycheck would go to them into a bank account just like any normal job. This work study does not get taken or deducted from the, the amount of your bill. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're thinking through these kinds of work options. Students will work directly with their work study supervisor to coordinate hours and come up with a schedule that works best um, so that you know, you're not working more than you can handle. They'll work around your class schedule and your activities and everything like that to make sure that everything flows nicely for you. And as someone who did this kind of work in undergrad and grad school, I can tell you that this is a great opportunity to earn some money, get your skin in the game, so to speak, with a job. Um, and this would also be a really good resume builder, get you some work experience in a controlled, more comfortable environment. And it can also be a really great way to make friends. I still have friends today that I made back in undergrad when I was uh, work study. So definitely some upsides to that. And you can find out how to apply and you can look at all the jobs available and everything on the human resources website, which is linked at the bottom of this slide. <clears throat> Next, you have the option to look into the big scary L word that makes everybody cringe. I cringe, you cringe, your mom cringes. Loans, yes, loans. You may see estimated loans on your aid notice, which this is referring to your potential eligibility for federal student loans. Although it can seem scary, using the federal loan option is considered a smart investment for a great education and helps in establishing credit for the student. No credit check is required for students to retain to obtain these federal loans and they're protected by the regular regulations of the federal government. So what this means for you is fixed interest rate set by Congress. So it's not going to be all wonky and go all over the place while you're working to pay them off. Uh, and a huge number of repayment options, including income-based, that won't break the bank when you begin repayment after you graduate. The maximum amount of these direct loans that a dependent student can borrow over your four-year period is $27,000 and is based on the following schedule. For freshmen, you can get a maximum of $5,500 which can be split up up to 3,500 can be subsidized, which means that the government takes care of the interest on that for you. Um, once you move up to a sophomore, that goes up to a maximum of 6,500, up to 4,500 of that can be subsidized. And then once you move up to a junior and into your senior years, the maximum amount that you can have is 7,500. For this current 2023-2024 academic year, the um, interest rate for these loans is 5.50%. And as I said, this interest rate is set by Congress each year. We do typically receive new interest rates in July once Congress decides those. So keep an eye out for that updated information. We'll have that updated on our website and the federal government will have that updated on their website as well. 
Finally, our high need nursing students may also be eligible for a separate nursing loan of up to $2,500 a year. And this could also have been included in your aid notice within the estimated loans. <clears throat> Another great way to pay for school is through outside scholarships, AKA free money, AKA give me all your free money. I don't have to pay any of this back. These are, these are funds that you guys will have to seek out and apply for on your own. Um, some really great sources for this kind of scholarship funding include the internet with a big caveat that you need to be very, very careful where you're looking for scholarships, making sure that you're absolutely never paying to apply for scholarships because that means that you're probably getting scammed. Um, and just, you know, be very vigilant with your online searches there. You can also look at uh, with parents, employers, some employers will have scholarship programs, community organizations or churches. Um, your high school guidance counselor's office has probably already been hounding you about different community scholarships. And if they haven't, you make sure to pound on their door and hound them for any of that free money. <laughs> and, um, a, the last thing you could um, look into would be like professional organizations related to whatever major or area of study you wanted to go into. Big important thing, if you do get any of these kinds of outside scholarships, you'll need to let our office know as well so that we can consider that along with the rest of your financial aid just to make sure that everything fits and is in its correct space. So I wanna point out one of the sections of the financial aid notice that you, you're probably seeing at this point. Um, and that is the net cost section. So this section is in the aid notice to tr provide you with an estimate of what you guys might need to pay out of pocket or finance through a student loan or something of that nature. The federal or nursing student loans mentioned earlier can be used towards that, but there may be additional funding that's needed to cover those costs as well. We did list some options for you on the aid notice to help pay those net costs, but we're gonna go into a, a little bit further detail in the next few slides about those. So the first option available to you is um, a tuition payment plan, which Villanova does through uh, a company called Nelnet. This payment plan is administered through our bursar's office, and this allows payments to be made over a select period, as opposed to one large installment each term. Uh, you can refer to the website on the slide for more information. Uh, it's super important to keep in mind that this option can be used in addition to one of the other financing options to reduce the amount of loan debt that you guys are incurring. For example, if a student has, say, a $30,000 balance due for the year and the family has $20,000 that they can put towards the balance for the year, the family can uh, finance this amount over the academic year of $2,000 a month and finance the remaining $10,000 in a loan. Just an example, but just one way that you can use these two options together. Another loan option that's available for you guys is the Federal Direct Parent Plus Loan. This is a federally funded loan program that can be borrowed by the parent of a dependent student up to the remaining cost of attendance. The current interest rate for this loan is fixed at 8.05%. So it works the same as those regular student loans. It's a fixed interest rate. So it's not gonna fluctuate up and down while you're in school or when you pay that back in the future. This also has a processing fee of 4.228%. Now, this loan does not have an aggregate limit, which means the total amount that you can take out over your whole career, uh, but it is limited to your yearly cost of attendance. 
payments on this loan are able to be deferred until six months after the student graduates, similar to the regular federal direct loans that the student is eligible for. If for any reason, a parent would be denied a Parent PLUS loan, the student is then eligible for an additional amount of $4,000 in unsubsidized federal direct loans. Again, this loan is in the parent's name only, so keep that in mind when you're looking into this option. It is in the parent's name. Um, we have a bunch of information about this option out on our website. The federal government has a bunch of information out on their website, so be sure to check that out if that's something that interests you. So financing can also be done through a private educational loan. This can be through any private lender of your choice. Villanova does have a list of preferred private lenders that we've done a bunch of research on um, so that you don't have to do all that background work, which can be found on, on our financial aid website under financing information. And we have a section specifically dedicated to private educational loans with anything you would need to know. A, a few super important things to keep in mind with private loans. Number one, interest rates can vary and they are dependent upon the credit history of either the borrower or the co-signer. Uh, and the interest rates will vary depending on what lender you go with. Um, the loans can be in either the student or the parent's names. So just be thinking through that when you're going to select which of these lenders you're gonna be using. And lenders will also vary in terms of deferment options, which is how long you can wait to pay them back after you graduate. Um, again, they'll vary in their interest rates, whether those interest rates are fixed or variable, meaning that they fluctuate or don't fluctuate while you're in school when you graduate. And lenders may also have additional fees that you have to pay um, along with that. So. Super, super important. Make sure that you're shopping around, doing your research, do your homework before choosing all any of the private educational loans. Alicia, thank you so much. You should get water and some breath right now because that was a whole bunch that you um, just went over. So um, I saw a lot of great um, Q and A's coming through. Um, so as you're digesting this information, go ahead and ask those questions. They are being answered in the chat box. And then at the end, um, any that haven't been answered or any that I see repeatedly um, asked, we'll go over as well. So next I'll talk about changes in the family circumstances. Um, Alicia noted at the beginning that each year we are going to re-review your application and that those changes in family circumstances could impact year to year. But we understand that sometimes the application that you are submitting now is not an accurate portrayal of what your financial circumstance is today, um, since you're using 2022 tax information. So it's important that if you have had a change in employment, an unfortunate death of a parent, there has been a divorce or separation, loss of untaxed income or permanent disability, anything that has occurred since the 2022 tax year that is not being reflected in your um, application, you would want to notify our office of those changes. You'd submit a request for revision form, which can be found directly on our website. I did see that that was linked a few times in the Q&A. Um, it's right on our website and that will ask for um, basically what's going on, what has changed, and we will ask for supporting documentation. So an example would be you worked all of 2022, but in 2023, you lost your job. We would ask for final pay stubs from that employment, unemployment information that you might be receiving, um, a termination letter that might go over severance or things like that. And we'll use that to um, make a determination on if we are able to offer any additional aid. So if any of these pertain to you, or if you have something else that might be sticking out as far as financial need, family circumstance, anything along those lines that does not is not portrayed in that current application that you've completed, reach out to us. And you can do so at finaid at villanova.edu. 
So just a few notes. Um, official aid notices will be sent soon once we've had a chance to review all of the FAFSA information. We are going to be heads down in training tomorrow to go over what does it look like now and where are we pulling that information. Um, there have been a lot of changes that for us as a team, we need to review as well. Um, but we will be getting those out, like I said, as soon as the department can tell us that the information we've received is accurate, we are going to move forward and start getting some of those out to all of you. Um, let me just say that those estimated aid packages that we do have out there, we are very confident in that information with the CSS profile. Um, the federal aid is, um, like I said, a combination is built into that. So we are very confident with, with those estimated aid packages. The only thing that you probably will see a change of will be the, um, the breakdown of what all of them actually look like. Just a reminder, you're going to reapply each year. We'll send out reminders. We send a, a postcard home, um, usually in the spring, to all of our returning students, hoping that if the students haven't received our emails, that the parents will get a chance to do that as well. Um, just continue to monitor your, um, if you have paid your deposit, you probably now have access to your MyNova account. Um, if you have not paid a deposit yet, you'll still do everything through um, the applicant status page. And then, um, all email notifications, all notifications are sent to the students. So it is extremely important um, that you are not using a high school email address while doing anything through this application process. Um, and then once, a, once the student is deposited, they will receive their Villanova email address and all communications will go to that. So good conversation for everybody to have around the table as far as sharing information, forwarding information, I know there's a lot that they'll be receiving these next few months and then even throughout their career, but financial aid deadlines are important um, and missing information could hold up whether or not your bill is getting paid. So um, students, if you're out there listening to us as well, make sure you're sharing what you have with, um, with your parents. So if you ever are on campus and you wanna visit us, we recently moved. We are now in the technology services building, which is so glamorous of a name. Um, we are, down the street um, on the same side of campus, um, we're across the street from the main part, the church and everything like that. But um, the campus map will get you to us. You can also email us at finaid at villanova.edu. We have a live chat. So if you have given us a phone call and you're frustrated, you can't get through, someone's not answering, we only have two or three people answering phones at once, um, you can hop on to our website at finaid. Um, .villanova.edu, and we have a live chat option and someone is there during normal business hours to help answer those questions. If you have very detailed questions um, regarding, you know, details, financial information, things like that, we'll probably just move that chat to a phone call, but we'll ask for your phone number and we'll give you a call then. Um, or you also have the option to make an appointment. Um, that is also on our financial aid website. It's down all the way down at the bottom to the right. It's a request, so you'll put in a date, some dates and times that work best for you. Um, we used to have it where you would make it with a specific counselor that ended up just getting backed up in this way. Um, our scheduling team is able to take a look at what your question is and point you in the best direction and get you scheduled as soon as possible. So I know we had a lot. I'm going to um, flip over to see what's happening in the Q&A. And I wanna thank, I wanna thank Daly and Nate and Mary Kay and Morgan, because I see you ha have all been working very diligently on answering a lot of questions. It looks like we've had 44 answered so far. So let me just take a look. Matt, thank you. Um, Matt just put in the um, request for revision links for anybody in the chat, if anyone is looking for that. Just... Sorry about that. Okay. Um, let me pull that up. Where do they go? Sorry, everybody. Is my well, screen still for that, Amanda, I'm happy to jump in and just um, say a couple of quick words about scholarships. I know I saw um, a slew of questions come through about merit-based scholarships. Um, so first and foremost, congratulations to all the students and the families on the call tonight. You know, this is a really exciting time, but Certainly pretty overwhelming, especially as you are kind of comparing packages and you're trying to get down to the nitty gritty of what that sort of, you know, bottom dollar payment is going to look like. 
Um, so for Villanova, so every single college that you're interested in is going to have a, a slightly different philosophy when it comes to financial assistance. Um, and because Villanova, we are uh, the nation's only Augustinian Catholic university, we have really uh, kind of lean into that Augustinian identity when it comes to financial assistance, uh, whereby the vast majority of our resources are allocated towards supporting need-based financial assistance versus merit-based scholarships. Only about 2% of our admitted students were awarded a merit-based scholarship. So they are few and far between by design. Um, with one exception being the presidential scholarship, which did have a, a totally separate application and review process. Um, the other merit-based scholarships did not have a separate application that was required. So my office uh, in admissions, we did um, do very, very thorough review um, for all eligible candidates. You did not need to apply for the majority of these scholarships. And at this point in time, all of our merit scholarships have been awarded. So I hope that covers most of your questions about scholarships. Again, kind of the quick points there. Um, the vast majority of our, our money is allocated towards need-based assistance and only 2% of admitted students are um, awarded a scholarship. We do not match any scholarships. So um, if folks maybe want to reach out and say, hey, XYZ College offered me this amount, we'll say that's, that's marvelous, um, but we are not um, kind of open to matching merit-based awards. But as we have talked about at length tonight, we are very open um, to considering a need-based appeal should you sort of qualify for any of those major life changes that we've talked about. Thank you, Daly. Yeah, there are a lot of questions about scholarships out there and that, that that's normal. We, we're used to it. Um, to the point of the request for revision or the change in circumstances, if you um, have received need-based aid and you would like to appeal for additional aid, we do have um, an appeal process that you are able to reach out to our office via email and ask for an appeal form. We will submit that. We might ask a few questions to see if a request for revision is a better option for you, um, but you, you can do that. But again, that is only for need-based aid. It can't be, uh, it's not a request for any kind of merit scholarship or anything like that. So that you would reach out to our office directly. Um, I'm looking at, let's see if, so someone asked about if you um, receive an estimated aid package and you accept it, what happens if the number goes up and down? Do you get a notification? Yes. Once we receive, once we um, have received the FAFSA and reviewed the FAFSA, you, we will um, put together a, a new um, final aid package for you and you will be notified of that. So you'll be able to go take a check, you'll check that out. So our goal is that that net cost that you see at, on your estimated aid package will remain the same as what we have estimated. The only time that something might change is if we received um, tax information that was not accurate compared to what we what may have come through on the IRS or anything like that. Those are the only times that you would that you should see a change. If the information is accurate that was reported to us, we our goal is to keep that estimated net cost that you can see on your aid notice the same once we um, do the reallocation of institutional, state, and or federal aid. Um, if you have not yet completed the FAFSA or the CSS profile, I recommend that maybe you take some time tonight or tomorrow to get that done in order for us to have an opportunity to look at it before May 1st. Um, we really work very hard this time of year to, to look at those applications. Um, it, it really depends on where we land financially and what we have spent. So this year we are still able to go ahead and accept those applications, but it's very important that you look at the deadlines moving forward, what that looks like. Um, but we are still able to accept them. I just please get them in as soon as possible. If you do them on April 25th, I cannot guarantee that we'll be able to get an estimated aid package out to you um, by the time you would be asked to deposit. Let's see. Someone said that their financial aid tab does not show it. Um, our, the financial aid notices this year are being released under the, under, as a, as a decision. So you may not see that under your, um, financial aid tab, but you would see that the same place where you would see your admission decision. There were a lot of questions asking, um, 
maximum income and maximum assets, you know, in order to be eligible for aid. And while I wish it was that easy, our jobs would be so much easier. There's so much more that goes into it. It depends on how many people are living in the household. For the College Board CSS profile, we are um, still including the number in college. The FAFSA is no longer looking at that. Um, the, there's assets, there's age of the parent and how close they are to retirement and all of these things that are going on in the background to protect your income and protect your assets from those calculations. So it's not as easy as I make $150,000, will I qualify for financial aid? Grant aid does not need to be paid back after graduation. That's that's the good stuff. That's what you're really looking for is, is the grant aid. Um, Alicia really talked up working on campus and student employment. I will echo that. I also was once a student employee, so um, it was a really great experience. Let's see. I'm seeing a number of questions um, regarding the honors program and if there's any sort of relationship between being invited to honors and being awarded a merit-based scholarship. Um, so those two processes somewhat mirror each other in that there is no separate application and we do automatically consider all eligible candidates. So as I previously sort of went over, only about 2% of our admitted students have been awarded a merit-based scholarship. Um, the honors program um, is, is also pretty competitive. Only about 10% of our incoming first years were invited to join the honors program. Um, there is no sort of direct causal relationship. So just because you may have received an honors program invitation does not automatically guarantee that you will receive a merit-based award. Um, the other question, again, the sort of mirror each other is, um, if I was not awarded a merit-based scholarship now, do I have the opportunity to maybe be awarded as a current sophomore, junior, senior at Villanova? And no, um, those merit scholarships are only for incoming first years. Um, and same goes with the honors program, only incoming first years uh, may be invited to join. You cannot be a current Villanova student and um, you know wish to be reevaluated. Thank you, Daly. Um, I see a question, are only need-based students eligible for student jobs or can anyone um, receive a job on campus? The first two weeks of the semester, normally we are only, um, employers are only looking at work-study students just because it's a federal need-based program. But after that, um, all jobs that are available are um, eligible for you to apply for. It is just like applying for any other job. So you will need to um, submit an application and then some may have you come in an interview. Um, so just make sure that you are following up on that. And you'll start seeing those jobs posting on the HR website, usually in later, later on in the summer. I see a question about retirement, retiring in June. That could very well impact the financial aid package. Um, that's something we usually wait until about two months after the change in circumstance for us to review only because um, by that time you would have you would know what your distributions might look like, what your retirement date looks like, was there any kind of a payout in your retirement? And same with unemployment. It gives us it gives us and you the opportunity to gather all of the documents, make sure we're looking at that accurately because what we don't want to do is underestimate, or overestimate your aid package and put you in a situation where the next year um, we um, underestimated what you might be able to pay and your aid will change the next year. So we're trying to get the most accurate to set you up for success in the future. Um, the number next to the total cost of attendance is just is the cost of attendance. So that's everything, the, the your direct and your indirect. Um, and then there is a, a section right below that that says net costs, and that is your cost of attendance less your grant aid. Um, so if you are receiving any grant or scholarship aid, if you are not receiving any grant or scholarship aid, um, you'll see that full cost of attendance listed there. Now, Alicia went through that. You could work on campus. You could take out loans to help fill that in. Um, but when we're looking at the net cost, we're really just looking at if, if there is any grant or scholarship that would reduce the actual cost at that point. When should a student hear back from a revision form? Um, this time of year, we're really working on all of those as quickly as possible. So um, you'll get that in. Our counselors are running reports daily to see if any new information has come in. 
Um, keep an eye out for emails. Talk to your student about keeping an eye out as well, because if there is further information that we might need, we'll probably put it in the applicant status page. You'll see it there. But also we may reach out because of the timing to say, we need this specific pay stub or we need this specific W-2. Um, because sometimes just putting a requirement out there for you won't equate the same way to you that it does for us. So we'll probably be reaching out directly for those. So I would like to say that we'll, we could get that done within a week or two. Um, it really just kind of depends on how um, complete the information is when we receive it. Um, it says that the EFC was lower on, uh, okay, so I'm seeing the website calculator. I'm assuming that's the net price calculator. The net price calculator is a tool. It is in no way a reflection of what your aid package or need is necessarily going to be. It's to give you an idea. There's so many other things, like I said, um, when we're looking at determining in a student aid index or an EFC, that cannot be taken into consideration through that net price calculator. Um, and also it needs to be extremely accurate when you are completing it. And a lot of the time we get we get estimated numbers or a question is misunderstood when you're answering it. And, and we do see some significant changes on that. You are 100% able to reach out to us and ask about an appeal or something like that. But what showed on your net price calculator is not going to necessarily be a reflection on what we are able to offer after the fact. We probably, what we can do if it, if it really does cause concern, go through the answers and the questions and try and figure out where that difference came from. But it is totally an estimate and is actually not like a, a very clear reflection of what any kind of aid package would look like. It's to get an idea and a general feeling um, for our families. Um, we have no financial aid result in our applicant portal. Are they all completed? We are still working on financial aid packages every single day and all night and all weekend during this, this time of year. Um, so it could be that it was either just submitted or it was incomplete. So if we don't have the tax returns, we're not going to put together an estimated package. Um, if it was in, if there were if it was just submitted, it takes some time for College Board to process and send that information to us. Um, if you're concerned because you submitted it a while ago and you haven't seen anything, feel free to reach out to our office, but I would first check the applicant status page um, for the financial aid requirements to see if there is anything outstanding um, before giving a call. When do financial, when do final aid packets come out? We are going to start working on them as soon as possible. Um, I, like I said, we've gotten thousands of FAFSAs just loaded in today. Um, I'm sure we've got thousands more that are still getting loaded. Um, we have to, like I said, go through and reflect that. Um, the Department of Ed sent out four errors that they know are in the FAFSA. So we've got to make sure that my counselors are clear on what those are and what to be looking for. Because we, when we give you that final package, we want it to be final for you. We want to make sure that the FAFSA did what the FAFSA was supposed to do. Um, but I... Uh, I can speak that we are very confident in the estimated aid packages that we have given you as far as what that bottom line net cost would be. If you are uncomfortable with that bottom line net cost and you are receiving some kind of institutional grant, it's worth reaching out to us to see if there's anything additional that can be done. Um, it's not guaranteed. It really depends on the circumstances and all of that, but you can do that. Daily, there's a question. Oh, you're typing the answer. Okay. <laughs> Alicia, do you see any questions that you're seeing repeated through this? I just want to put another plug out there that one of the most important things that you can do for yourself right now and as we go along through the rest of this process is keep an eye on those emails. Keep an eye on those emails. Um, email is the main way that we will communicate with you. Um, keep an eye on those emails. Keep an eye on that applicant status page. 
Um, I also want to shameless plug um, Villanova Admission does have an Instagram page where they put a bunch of cool information and every now and then a familiar face will show up from our financial aid group and answer some questions on there. Um, so it's just Villanova Admission, V-I-L-L-A-N-O-V-A-A-D-M-I-S-S-I-O-N on Instagram. Check that out. <laughs> Um, so, oh, if you are a Pennsylvania resident, we want to make sure that you are um, completing the application by May 1st. Very, very important. Um, Pennsylvania does not often or I think ever has flexed that May 1st deadline. So you want to make sure that the FAFSA is completed by May 1st in order for your for you to be reviewed for state grant eligibility. That is extremely, extremely important. May 2nd will not be appealed by, by um, Pennsylvania. It has to be in by May 1st. So if you have not done your FAFSA yet, like I said, I recommend getting that in tonight if you would like to be reviewed um, for state, state grant eligibility. Best way to contact us, um, I had that up at the end, but I know um, Matt is going to be sharing this presentation. First stop at our website, it's finaid.villanova.edu. There's a lot of great questions on there. Um, you can reach us by phone or by email. All of the contact information is right there on the website. And also if you are on site during normal business hours, which are um, 8.30 to 5, you can hop in and jump on the live chat and get in touch with somebody as well. I think we have answered everything. Um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. I know this was a lot to digest and even more so because you don't necessarily have all of that breakdown of the funds that Alicia went over with you on that aid package. Um, but to summarize, the estimated aid packages that we have out there are as accurate as we are able to make them. We are confident in the information that we have provided to you. Um, based on the combination of what we think all of the estimated grant loan or work would look like in, in some capacity. So you can feel very confident in that. If you still have other concerns, feel free to reach out to us, use that request for revision form if there's a change. And the one thing that I would like to stress is making sure that if you have not completed something, if you have something that is incomplete, or if you want to submit additional information for review, please get that in as soon as possible. Um, we get a lot of the time in April 26th or an April 27th emergency that we need to get something done. And I can't guarantee that we'll have it loaded into our system that I'm going to have everybody able to, to get to that on a weekend or something like that. So please, 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 while we have some time, um, if you can't do it tonight, let's set up some time this weekend that everyone sits down to um, complete those applications. And before we log off, I know there was one mention of this earlier, but um, cannot plug it enough that Admitted Students Day, Saturday, April 13th, your student has received many, many communications from the admission office, inviting them to come experience campus. It's a really wonderful day, um, very comprehensive, especially this might be your first time coming to see Villanova. You'll get to um, get a campus tour and chat with current students and tend, attend um, a club and activities fair. Um, you'll hear from faculty, you'll hear from deans. Uh, so it's a really wonderful day. And especially as it pertains to our conversation tonight, all of the financial aid counselors will be available for private individual one-on-one -on -one meetings. We're also just like really cool if you want to come hang out. But... <laughs> You know, uh, it, it's a busy um, day, but it is such an exciting day for everybody. If if you are able to make it to campus that day, it, there's really a buzz in the air while you're there. Uh, my friends, I've been seeing lots of questions in the chat about who your financial aid counselor is, if you're a specific letter. Um, if you go out to our financial aid website, we have a meet our staff section and that will tell you everyone who works in our office and especially the financial aid counselors and the breakdown of our alphabet. Um, we 
uh, were all assigned a few letters of the alphabet to just get through that and um, help address you on a personal basis. So you can check that out on our financial aid website if you need to. And if you can't get in touch with that counselor, you can... And everyone is able to answer all of the questions. The only time that you really, it's more one, once you're here on campus and you need to see a familiar face or if you've already gotten an email or worked with somebody, um, that section is more for our breakdown as far as understanding of who's got what and who's covering what and all of that. Um, but if you want to reach out to our office, um, there's a lot of our counselors working remotely right now to try and get these files done. But we always have counselors in the office and available for phone calls and things like that. Okay, look at that, no open questions. No open questions, we did it. Um, all right, well, thank you everybody. We hope to see you soon. Good luck in this last month as you're making your decisions and taking in all of the information. Um, we wish you the best of luck and congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> have a wonderful evening.